thanks for clicking on the video. Hit the subscribe button for more weekly content, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. At long last, Wormon will finally ascend the power bestowed only to champions. Only for it to not really mean much in the grand scheme of things. What's good peeps, what's poppin', how are you doing? And welcome to part 12 of our ongoing series, What If Kari Was The Digimon Emperor? We're on the tail end of things in regards to this particular adventure, one in which the bearer of the Crest of Light fell to darkness to become the malevolent Digimon Emperor. There's still plenty of the story left to tell, don't get me wrong, especially given the changes that have taken place, but we're closer to the end than you might realize. The last two parts introduced DNA Digivolution to us, so the only major plot points left are Black War Greymon and the Destiny Stones, the Digimon World Tour, and Oikawa and the Dark Spores. All of that, and Ken still doesn't have a champion level Digimon. Well, not yet anyway. Let's see how his meeting with Aru Kenimon goes as we kick this part off. If this video receives 25 likes, then that will let me know you also want things to continue into part 13. Let's begin. Ken couldn't believe what he was seeing. Another human in the digital world. Well, who was she? From what he was told, he thought only children could enter the digital world. And what's the deal with that flute? Hey, who are you? Answer me! My, my, how rude. Is that any way to speak to your elders? Maybe this will teach you a lesson. After saying that, the strange woman began playing her flute again. The instrument's sound was soon overpowered by a vicious buzzing. Ken and Buchimon turned towards the room's only doorway and saw the source of that sound. A horde of angry flymon heading their way. Where did they come from? I don't know, Ken, but we have to go now. There's no way we can fight all of them by ourselves. And without a second thought, Buchimon grabbed his partner and took off. Ken didn't want to admit it, but he was right. They couldn't take all of them with just the two of them. They just weren't strong enough. Once Buchimon found a spot in the room where they could hide for the time being, Ken used a D terminal to contact the others. Come on, guys. I don't know how much longer we can last. Back to the other Digi Destin, it was Joe Lee that saw Ken's message and gathered up everyone else. He needs our help, and now! But where is this Giga House? It looks like his location was included in the message. Come on, there's no time to wait. Everyone was obviously worried about Ken, but Yo Lee in particular. She had made it all but clear to everyone, except Ken, that she was infatuated with him, to say the least. Her attraction to the young man was evident from the start, and since he was genuinely a nice guy up to this point, her feelings grew into something more genuine as well. Just how genuine? Even she didn't know. But right now, making sure he's safe is the top priority. Back inside Giga House, Ken and Bushimon were trying their best to keep hidden away from the Flymon. And even amongst the ferocious buzzing, they still heard the continuous sound of the flute coming from the Lady in Red. Then, it finally clicked. Bushimon! Now I know why we're being attacked! That woman's flute is controlling insect-type Digimon and making them go crazy! Are you sure, Ken? Positive. It certainly explains how you're unaffected right now. For those who don't know, Buchimon is classified as a fairy attribute Digimon, that he would be unaffected by Aru Kenimon's hypnosis. If we can only stop her spell! Unfortunately for them, they wouldn't have time to think of a plan since a swarm of Flymon found their hiding spot and nearly forced themselves in. All seemed lost until Ken and Buchimon heard their saving grace. V-Laser! Blast Rage! Gold Rush! Hand of Fate! Rosetta Stone! x scratch Just in time, the Digi Destin made it and knocked the unsuspecting Flymon away. This sneak attack even took the mysterious woman by surprise, which made her stop playing her hypnotic flute. Ken, are you okay? Yoli asked, hopping off her Digimon partner and running up to them. Better now that you're here, he responded. Yoli's face was as red as her pants, and so was Ken after he realized what he said and how it sounded. But the gravity of the situation soon returned to him, and he explained to the others about what he and Bujimon discovered. She can control insect Digimon? Oh no! Digmon! You have to- Cody tried to have Digmon revert back, but it was too late. The sound of the flute once again filled the entire house, and Digmon was under Aru Kenimon's control, just like he was in the original story. Not only that, but behind Digmon was another horde of brainwashed insects ready to attack. Digmon! No! Guys, what are we gonna do? We can attack him? He's our friend! Ken, having observed the situation since the beginning, offered a possible solution. If we could put an end to that woman's flute playing, then her spell should be broken. However, she's heavily guarded by those bugs, so a direct approach is out of the question. Well, if you can't get the flute from her, how about we try canceling out the sound itself? Hell! This house probably has all the equipment I need for it. Ken, 
Did you happen to pass by a room with a computer in it? He did recall passing by a computer room when making his way here, but he was unsure how this was going to help. Yoli simply said to trust her and took control of the situation by dividing up the teams. Cody, TK, and Kar would stay here and fend off Digmon and the other hypnotized Digimon, while she, Ken, and Davis would carry out her plan from the computer room. With no objections, the Digi Destin put all the trust in Yoli's plan and split up to make things happen. Some of you guys are probably wondering why I'm also putting so much emphasis on Yoli in this part as well as Ken. Well, there are a few reasons for that. For starters, in regards to the plan for stopping Arucanimon's flute, that falls into Yoli's realm of expertise, so I think it makes sense for her to leave the charge there. Secondly, there's her relationship with Ken. The original story does nothing to develop the relationship between the two. Yoli outright states that she has a crush on him early on, and once we hit the epilogue, BOOM! The two are married with three kids. What? If that's going to happen, I at least want them to at least establish something. And that's saying a lot coming from me, because Yoli is my least favorite character in this season after Cody. I don't particularly care what happens to her, but I can't deny her role in the story, at least this part of it. Which brings me to my third reason. I mentioned in the last part that Davis and Ken being DNA Digivolution partners was a foregone conclusion. Forget I said that. At this point, it's still anybody's game. Iron Moro, whose comment you see right here, mentioned in a previous part that it would be interesting to see Ken and Yoli being DNA Digivolution partners, considering the reasons outlined before. I personally agree, it's just like with TK and Kari in our story, it could symbolize something buddy between the two of them, instead of just throwing it at us at the end. However, I'm going to leave that decision to you guys. Should Ken stay partners with Davis, or should he partner up with Yoli? Use the link in the top right or in the pinned comment to vote for what you think should happen. Make your voice heard, because it just might be featured in the next part or two. Back to the story, TK, Kari, and Cody were doing their best to keep the attacking insect Digimon at bay, but they just kept coming. Not only that, but Digimon was attacking with all of his strength, while the other Digimon had to hold back to avoid hurting him too much. Not only that, but the woman, privy to what the Digi Destin were scheming, sent a herd of Sneemon to handle the others, knowing that the group in front of her was too preoccupied to do anything about it. Yoli's team made it to the computer room, and sure enough, it had everything she needed. So what's this plan of yours? We're gonna fight fire with fire. The boys weren't following. If we take the music from the flute, invert it, and play it on top of that woman's sound, the clashing sound should cancel out the hypnotic spell. Now that everyone understands, they were ready to put their plan into action. But as the computer was booting up, the Sneemon appeared. You guys keep working! Me and XVmon can take care of these house flies, Davis said before running into action. The two were able to get a sample of the flute's music that was filling up the house, but they looked up and saw that XVmon was completely overwhelmed, no matter how strong it was. Yoli, keep at it! Let's go, Bujimon! Ken rushed Davis aside before Yoli could say anything, but she continued working, though it was even harder to move the giant mouse on her own. Bujimon tried his best to assist his Digimon friend, but even with his strongest heavy beam, it wasn't enough to slow down the giant bugs for a significant amount of time. Despite his best efforts, the little guy just couldn't do anything at all, and in a moment in which the armored Digimon was wide open, he was hit by a devastating twin sickles that knocked him back down to Wormon. Wormon! No! Ken ran up to his partner without any regard for his own safety, even amongst his teammates' protests. Yoli saw it all and stopped what she was doing. Ken! Wait! Wormon! Wormon, please say something! The little guy was in Ken's arm, but once he came to, he started lashing about trying to get free. Just like Digmon before him, Wormon was now under the hypnotic spell. Wormon did whatever he could to try and break free, but Ken refused to let go. It's okay, Wormon. I'm here. I won't let you go. You and I, we've been apart for so long. Seeing you for the first time after so long, it was the happiest day of my life. I refuse to let anyone or anything separate us again. Yo, Lee! Do it! Break this spell! The young lady, visibly upset at how hurt Ken looked, silently obliged and made the final adjustment on the computer. With the push of a button, the inverted audio played throughout the entirety of Giga House, releasing all those placed under the spell of the woman's flute. The Sneemon flew away after regaining their senses, and Davis and Yoli ran up to check on Ken and Wormon. Ken? What happened? Did I do that? Everything's just fine, buddy. I'm just glad you're alright. He responded with tears rolling down his face. He then stood up and turned to Yoli and grabbed her hand. Yoli, thanks to you. Wormon and all the other Digimon have been saved. Really, you're incredible. Yoli read again, found it impossible to form a sentence after hearing something like that. Uh, guys, 
I don't mean to break up this soap opera, but we should really check on our friends. They agreed, though Yoli was a bit miffed that her moment with Ken had to be interrupted. The group was soon reunited, and they were all glad to see that Digmon was back to his old self. But now that all that has been taken care of, just the matter of this woman in red. They looked to see where she was once sitting, but her figure was no longer there. As if by stealth, she suddenly appeared in front of them. Did she jump from all the way up there? There's no way! No human could survive that! Who are you, lady? And what do you want? The only answer they got was a maniacal laughter, and soon the woman revealed her true identity. Aru Kenimon. You're right, little brat. I'm not human. You're all my prey. You might have ruined my plan for Ken here, but now that the whole gang is here, I just have as much fun destroying you all. If it's me you want, then come and get me. Everyone, let me and Wormon take care of this. We all got you into this mess after all. Though hesitant, the others heeded his wish and stood by ready to back him up. Aru Kenimon, thanks to you, me and Wormon found exactly what we've been looking for. Right, pal. Right. What are you brats talking about? I'm talking about the desire to see things through to the end and to never let go of what we hold dear. Let's go, Wormon. A brilliant light erupted from Ken's D power, and the same light soon cloaked his partner. Wormon, did evolve to Stingmon. And that's where this part will end for today. I know, I know, another cliffhanger. But come on, you can't tell me things aren't getting exciting. It'll also give you guys time to think on everything that just happened. Stingmon has finally arrived, so not only has every partner reached their champion level, but we got a pretty strong champion at that. There's also a matter of the beginning stages of Ken and Yoli's relationship. Regardless of whether they become DNA Devolution partners, would you all like to see their relationship be fleshed out in a series just like with TK and Kari? What would happen if Davis and Cody became fighting partners? There's so many questions left to be answered, but I still hope you guys are enjoying the series. Let me know your theories in the comments down below, and leave suggestions for more Digimon What Ifs you would like to see come to life in the future. Thanks for guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.